All right, this week we're working on FizzBuzz, and as you've read in the write-up, um, the FizzBuzz problem is a common interview question. It's a logic problem, and it demonstrates your ability to think through a logical problem and then sometimes try to optimize, you know, using either language or changing the logic so that the code could run more efficiently. Um, so um, I'm going to start, as we usually do, by forking this to my personal account. And while that's going on, when I do logic problems, I like to do some flow charting. And in general, I, I like to, when I'm writing functions, you know, when I'm doing this kind of functional um, programming, I like to think about the cases that, the user cases that I'm going to see. Um, and so I'm in dry oh here, and, um, and I'm thinking about cases. So like, so, so in this is a problem where the user is going to input, oh, let's just take a look. Um, I think I can run this for you. Uh, let's see, so that's forked. Um, I will open this up and so you we can see it running. That will help to frame the analysis. So let's see. So basically what happens is I get prompted for a number greater than zero. So the user enters zero, I'm not going to do anything with it. If the user enters minus one, I'm not going to do anything with it. If the user enters um, a floating point number, something with decimal places, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm looking for a very specific type of number and it has to be greater than one. So if I enter one, I'm going to do, I'm just going to process one number. Let's try it with another case. So if I enter three, I'm going to, I'm going to output for a number that is not divisible by three, five, or 15, I'm just going to output the number. If it's divisible by three, I will do a fizz. If it's divisible by five, I'll do a buzz. And if it's divisible by 15, I will do a fizz buzz. So I'm taking a number and I'm going to step through each number in the range from 1 to the, this maximum number. And I'm going to either output the number if it's not divisible by 3, 5, or 15, or I'm going to fizz buzz it. Okay, so that's where we're going. So in my analysis, um, I'm kind of picking out some kind of boundary conditions and those are really important when you're testing is to think about kind of the, the upper limit lower limit so like if I enter a zero nothing's going to happen if I do a one I get a one three I'm going to get a fizz five I'm going to get a buzz 15 I'm going to get a fizz buzz and I'm going to come back to this because this can help us think about the logic like because we're going to be doing some logical testing in JavaScript you know what's the order that I should test this in but in general, what's going to happen in this program, I'm just breaking it down into pieces because that's how you program. You, you take, it's basic problem solving. You have a big problem and then you kind of chunk it into smaller problems that you can address more in a more focused way. So first of all, the problem, we're going to get a user inputs a valid maximum number. So we saw that, you know, you don't accept just any number. You kind of loop around until you get a number that you consider valid. Then I'm going to iterate from 1 to the maximum number. So for each number in between that range of 1 and the maximum number, I'm going to make a test for the fizz buzz. And what I'm going to do, because I'm going to need to pull all these numbers together and then output them, is I'm going to store the, the number if it's not a fizz buzz. So here's kind of a if then. Um, if, if it, if it, is not a fit if if it's not a fizz buzz number I'm going to just store the number and if it is a fizz buzz number I'll store a fizz a buzz or a fizz buzz and then at the end I'm going to take the storage that I have of all of the the values that I you know processed for each of the number in the range and I'm going to convert it into a string so that it could be outputted so this is kind of the order. And I, I went as far as to create a really detailed flowchart, but I'm not going to walk you through it because it's just so detailed. But this is kind of a standard flowchart for when you're in these diamonds are tests. And, you know, if you remember these uh, skewed rectangles are output, input, output. And, you know, so 
I'm not going to walk you through that. But I think this higher level diagram will help us to manage the code um, that we're going to do. All right, so let's go and that's mine. Let's go and grab this. I just cloned this. We're going to clone or download. So we want SSH and copy. And we'll go to, um, I'll just go to the command line, look where I am. And do I have a 3020 uh, LS? 30, sometimes I have a 3020. Nope. Oh, I do. Okay, let's go to 3020. And so, so I've kind of got a sub-level under, under my um, projects for 3020 work. And so I'll get clone bizbuzz. And then I'm going to come into code and open that up. So this is projects. 3020 is buzz. Okay. And so if I run this now with live server just to see my starting point, I don't really have anything going on. So it's just kind of got the title and nothing, nothing to output. Okay, so I think I'm going to turn off that port. And then looking at my index.html, I can I'll probably want to change the name. Um, and then um, the style sheet, we've got that pulled in. Um, and we've got, we are using the link tag for the style sheet, the script tag for our JavaScript. So I can go find that. And I've got a JavaScript with a list of to do's. Okay. Um, one of the things that this, this uh, starter code has for me, though, is some variable names. Um, predefined. So um, I'm going to want to kind of understand what these variable names, what type they are, and how they're intended to be used. And that's not entirely obvious looking at them here, but um, we'll, we'll figure that out. But let's start. So the is integer, we're going to use that for a control value for a while loop. So while loop is a type of uh, iterator. Um, and so um, going to be able to walk us through a, a range of numbers. And any type of, of iteration, you have to have some way to stop it. So you know you have some you, you initialize it, you test for whether you're done. So there has to be some way to test that you're done or you would just run infinitely. And then you have a way to change that value that you're testing. So you know if you don't change the value you, you'll never get done. Um, so is integer is going to be a, a, a boolean type value um, that's going to be true or false, and we're so we'll set that to we'll create a variable is integer. Um, well, actually, we've it's already been declared, so the let has declared it, but we're going to just initialize it. So is integer equals false. So this is just following along here. Um, and then we're going to create a while loop that will prompt the user for a number and it will keep looping around in this while loop until it gets what it considers a safe number. And it's going to use this, I'm going to use a number, I'm going to use a number of things to test for a good number. And you'll just see how I do it. Um, you, but you are sort of required to use this is safe integer. And there's um, notes on that in the write up. So you might want to do a little research to see what that's checking for, but basically that, you know, we're, it is an integer that is within boundaries of this computer. Um, so I'm going to set up my while loop and basically I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep checking until this is, is the integer is true. And so this bang gives it makes, if this is false, if is integer is false, then not false will be true. So now it's kind of confusing sometimes when you have this negative logic, but basically as long as I don't have an integer, I'm going to stay in this loop. But when I do get an integer, then is integer will know will be true. And so I will not want to be in the loop. So that is what the not is integer. It means keep doing this until you get to an integer. And so, and, and a lot of times I try to stay away from negative logic because it's kind of hard to think about. But in this case, it, it kind of makes sense that we want to 
we we're trying to get to a point where we have an integer so we're going to just not leave this loop until we get one um, so let input equal so we're going to prompt window prompt now before we we've, we've used the prompt before for input we haven't used window but it's kind of nice to use that just to to show the full you know it's a function off of the window object there enter a number greater than zero so that's that's the rule that I'm giving and and going to enforce with my user and one of the things I like to do is put in a guard statement so this is just a quick test for something that I just really will not accept at all and there's no point in even doing any more testing I'm going to do a break so what I'm saying here break will, will get me out of this loop and it's like um, it will not it won't go on to the next look code here but it'll break me out of this logic within the loop and it'll just take me back through the loop again so it just essentially says I'm not going to do any more testing in this run of the loop you you haven't entered anything and it's not worth me doing it so I'm just I'm just out of here on on a null so break is a, a way to to get out um, if this is another test that I like to do input so I don't want any floating points like I don't want anything with a decimal index of is a really handy command it's a string function that um, I'm so I've got I, when I enter like 1.0 it's coming in as a string so I can run a string function to look for a, a period there a dot and that tells me somebody's tried to enter a, a non-integer to enter a floating point so the way that index of works is that if it finds the thing in there it'll give you the position of it relative to starting point zero but if it doesn't find it it returns a negative one and you could try that out in your console but so if I enter something with um, with a with a dot in it which um, um, then I don't want to I just want to loop around again I'm not going to accept it but um, if if I get a negative one back on this index of that means that they didn't enter a dot that it wasn't able to find a dot and so I'm going to do some more processing on this input first of all I'm going to use that max number so that's one of the numbers declared and basically this max number now we know it's supposed to be a number and it's going to be that number that gives us the range that we're going to test Fizzbuzz on so I like to use this number parse int so this is parse int and this will this will guarantee that my num my string gets turned into a number because I'm going to be doing some math on it and you know even if there's no coercion or maybe you know even if yeah, I just want to guarantee that this is an integer. So I'm going to use the parse int and then is integer is now I'm going to do my test, my final test to see if this number is safe. So safe integer max number. And I have one more condition and I'm going to use that the double and which is the short stop and and what that means. So I'm going to do one more test that the number is greater than zero because I don't want any numbers less than or equal to zero and so this short stop and that's kind of a neat and it's a logical and so it means both of these have to be true but it's a short stop because it says uh, if this thing isn't true don't even bother testing this thing okay so so I'm gonna you know and I'm gonna test this one first because you know testing for greater than zero if it's not even a safe integer it's not even worth doing so um, logically I am going to uh, run a short stop and we typically always use our short stops for our ands and ors because usually we want to just save extra testing if it's not necessary so what we've got here is we have the ability now to um, we should be able to ensure that we get a good number and one thing I can do like while I'm you know as so I'm doing this in sections is I can use a console log um max number console log will put this 
will put a statement out for me. It's kind of a debugging tool. Probably don't want to deliver your final code with, with console logs in it, but it will tell me like I that I what I have chosen to use going forward for my save number. So let's run this and see what happens. So again, let's open up, uh, let's open up. You know, the thing is you can't open the inspector. That's kind of a bummer. You can't open the inspector when, um, when you have a prompt, but let's see if we can run this and see what happens. So let's say I enter, I don't enter anything. Okay, boom, nothing. I enter a zero, stay there. I enter a 1.0, stay there. Now I enter a four. Okay, and it picked that up. And let's look at the console. So you can see when it got through, so it didn't even get to console log with those first numbers, but when it got four, it logged max number four. So that's kind of a good thing. And I, I'll keep that around for a while, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna log, um, I'm going to comment that out. So comment um, in Visual Studio Code, if you're on a Mac, it's a command forward slash. If you're on, a, you just put the cursor there, hit command forward slash. If you're on Windows, it's control forward slash. So you can easily comment that out. All right, so the, we've got a number. We're pretty comfortable with that part. And again, this is uh, looking at our our thing. We've, we've got a valid number. So the next step is we're going to iterate from one through max number. And in that iteration, we're gonna test for fizzbuzz. So let's get in and look at that. Uh, so inside a while loop, prompt the user for max number value. Um, oh, we've already done that. Inside test suitable number, we've done that. Okay. Initialize FB results. Okay, so now we've got another one of these variables and we know what it means. So the FB results is going to be where we store our FizzBuzz results until we're ready to output. And it wants it to be an empty array, so we're going to do FB results equals. And we've used arrays before, and again, these are, you know, arrays are like lists, basically. They're just lists, and um, they usually, they, they start numbering at zero. And um, that can be a little confusing when you're thinking about, you know, normally you count one to 10, but on arrays, it's gonna be zero to nine. Um, so then we're gonna create, so we've initialized our, our array, our storage. So we're ready to collect some fizz buzzes. And um, we're gonna use a for loop. So we've used the while loop. For loop is really common. And we're going to, you, the, the syntax for the for loop, you'll see this in all C languages, is you see syntax languages, you, you initialize, you test, and you add, which you modify. So this i is our iterator value, and we've set up a counter. It's we've set up a counter from one to and including max number. So our boundaries are one through max number inclusive. Sometimes we don't want that last number, you know, we just want to get up to it. Sometimes we don't want the first number, you know, but it's important to understand your boundaries when you're doing iteration and our boundaries are one through max number. And so now we've got a for loop. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to look, test each number to see if it's a fizz buzz. And I am going to have a local variable that I call output string. And, and this could be done in different ways, but this is the way I do it. Um, output string, which is empty. And I'm going to, I'm going to collect up my numbers or fizz buzzes into this variable. And then when I'm all done with that testing, I'm going to put that variable into the FB result array. So this is not a variable provided by the program. I'm just going to use this because it, it makes it easier for me to think about it. So let's say um, I know I know I'm going to do some testing. Um, so I'm going to. This is where I'm going to look at my cases. Oh, and I'm hoping that you've read up on the percent operator, which is 
the remainder operator because this is how we're going to tell if something is divisible by something. Uh, let's just take a quick look over. We can just pull up. Let's see. I'm just going to do some console stuff here so that you can see like, so if I have, um, you know, a equals 12 and I do a percent two, the answer is zero because there's no remainder. But if I do a percent five, the remainder is two. So what's happening is it's dividing 12 by five and that gives you, you know, it goes into 10 and it has a remainder of two. So it's a really handy way, like for instance, if you just want to know is this an even or odd number, if I do a number divided by two or per, percent two, it'll answer zero if it's even, if it's odd, it will give one. So that's like a really quick test. And you'll see this remainder used for a lot of things, but we're going to use it to test for divisibility by three, five, and 15. So let's say I'm just kind of naively go in here and I'm going to say, okay, if it's divisible by um, three, um, the syntax was to just put your test inside your test expression inside parentheses and then curly braces create the, the scope of the test. And then I'm going to say output string Uh, plus equals so if it's if it's if it's um, divisible by three it's fizz um, then I'm gonna say if uh, I is divisible by five then I'm going to say output string plus equals buzz. So basically this plus equals is a concatenation. It's like says it says take the thing whatever it is and add this to it. So if it's an empty string and I add fizz to it then output string will be fizz. But now it's like what am I going to do with 15? Should I test for 15? Like should I say if I percent 15 output string plus equals fizzbuzz. Do I need to do that? So if I, if I picture coming in with, let's say one of my cases, you know, one, it's going to be, uh, oh, and I need to deal with the case where it's not that it, um, um, if if I haven't put anything in, if I haven't collected a 3, 5, or a 15 here, um, I might say, uh, I could say if output string dot length equals zero. Okay, so this is saying that, hey, I didn't, I was not able to divide by 3, 5, or 15, so the length of my output string is zero then I can just say um, output string. So this is sort of the case where it's not divisible by 3, 5, or 15 uh, equals i. So remember we just output the number when we don't know. Okay, is this going to work though? So I mean we've, we've handled all the cases that we're thinking about, but what if I do come in with 15? So if I come in with 15 with this particular logic, I am going to say i divided by 3 is, I'm going to end up with output string fizz, and then I'm going to add buzz to it, and then I'm going to add fizzbuzz, and I'm going to end up with fizzbuzz fizzbuzz, and that's what I don't want. So there are a couple ways I could deal with that. I could use the else, so if I do the else, and the syntax would be, you know, else if, so if I use else, it won't, it will only execute this, this if five or if 15 when I, um, so it will only execute those 
when the other one is false. So if I say if divided by three, okay, no, okay, now I will try to test by five, now I'll try to test by 15. And I'll avoid the problem of having fizzbuzz, fizzbuzz, because I won't test for 15. Well, no, I probably still will, because I would, I would pick up, well, no, I would, I would get 15 came in, I would test, and it would be divisible by three, and I'd get fizz. So that wouldn't work because I wouldn't get fizz buzz. I'd only get fizz. And these are the things you can, you'll see if you, if you do these things, these logic, and your logic isn't correct, you will see you're not getting the right answer. So, um, you know, I think you could try a few different things um, and see kind of what the effect is, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, what I think I can do, because I'm using this output string, is I can just leave this one out. Because by testing for 3 and 5, I'm basically going to get fizzbuzz if it's divisible by 15. Because I'm going gonna, gonna to pick those up since those are divisors of 15. Doing just these two tests will work. But there's a number of logical ways that you could do that. And I suggest that you try different ways. And there's even different ways you could do it without even using an output string. You could just accumulate them in another way. But I'm going to leave you to kind of play with that logic because that's the kind of thing that you will get in an interview question is that you would you would come up with your own answer and yeah, okay, you'd be able to show that it would work. And then the interviewer could say, well, what's another way that you might do that logic? So so think about that. It's a good, it's a good problem. But I'm going to leave it like that because I think I'm good. If I come in with three, I'm going to get fizz. If I come in with five, I'm going to get buzz. Um, and if I come in with 15, I'm going to get fizz buzz. So I'm set, and if I don't have 3, 5, or 15, I'm going to just get the number. So I think I'm good there. Um, and so now I want to store that output string. And we have that FB results that we initialize as an empty array. We're going to use the push. And the push is a function of arrays that puts something into the array. So output string. Arrays have a lot of functions and it makes you can do a lot of neat things with them and I really hope if you're interested in programming that you look into those functions over over this course because they are really powerful. Um, let's see so that should get us an array full of um, output strings. So let's let's just go try that out. Um, so we'll just do the go live. Well, let's just start with something like, let's just start with like 16. Oh, well, that's kind of a big number. Let's start with three, see what happens. Oh, so it didn't work. Let's take a look at this logic. So first of all, oh, output string not defined. So in our console, main 43, output string. Let's go take a look at that. So typo. And I'm sure you guys are starting to realize that typos are the bane of this kind of programming. And uh, let's see, we better turn this off for a minute. And let's just make sure we have these. So we have, yeah, very, the JavaScript is case sensitive. So, and you probably figured that out by now. Um, we want to make sure those are all the same. All right, let's try it again. So three, okay, and I haven't gotten to output yet, so we can't really do anything with that. But one thing I can do is I can, oh, got an error there. FB results push output string. Okay. And let me take a look at this. So looking at my code, I'm not seeing the error. Let me put a breakpoint in here. And we'll just refresh this and we'll enter three. And our max number is three, so that looks good. We're initializing output string. I'm gonna step through this. And I can see over here too that the output string is initialized. Uh, fizzbuzz. Okay, so now output string is fizz. And 
Why did that work? I percent five. Oh, you know what? I missed a very important part of this test. So let me take a look here. So it's not good enough to just do the remainder operation. I have to test it. So again, I'm looking for a remainder of zero. Um, and so big, big problem. If I'm just, if I'm just dividing that, it's going to always be true. Of course, you know, I can divide it. Let's just see, like if you're um, here in the console and you just do five, you know, let's see, uh, three, div, two, you're going to get back the remainder, but it's not going to, you need to test it. So that was a big problem there. So let's, let's go back and try this again. So three, okay. Take a look and see if there's any errors. Cannot read property push of undefined. So FB results. Oh, okay. Another typo. FB result. Let's make sure. Oh, should be results. Results is what it should be. So FB results and FB results. Okay. Let's go try this again. Okay. Go live. And we'll try three. We will inspect and no errors. Okay, good. So a little bit of debugging, a little bit of thinking about the checking our typos. And I think that this section looks good. Let's take a look at what that uh, FB results looks like. And I can do that by putting a breakpoint somewhere after this. And you can't put breakpoints on comments. Oh, it looks like I've got one down here at this next line. So let's just let it stop there and have a look at that. So three. And if you look over here, FB results, uh, we've got an array with three values, one, two, and fizz. The fizz, now this is what I was saying, how arrays are ordered from zero. So my first value goes into the zero slot of the array. So this looks good. I mean, even though fizz is divisible by three, two is the third element of the array. So that takes a little bit of thinking to get used to with arrays. Um, but to me, this looks good. I've got, I would, that's what I would expect. So I'm going to continue on at this point um, with the final step. Let me look at what my analysis tells me to do here. And these analysis aren't required for this project, but I really recommend taking a pencil and paper and kind of working out what you're going to do before you just jump into code because code is just messy, hard to read, typos, you know, definitely be using your formatter. You know, if, you, if you've got Beautify installed, format document, that'll keep everything lined up. But in any case, the human eye will overlook a lot of the errors. So do it in little steps. Um, I probably should be checking in after each of these steps, but I'm for this purpose, I'm not going to do that. But um, basically now I've got, I've tested for FizzBuzz. I've stored the numbers. My final thing is to convert storage to, to string and then output it. And if you look down here, we're being asked, um, okay, we've done this, calculate FizzBuzz in a loop. And in preparation for outputting, um, so we're going to convert FB results and array into FB text. We're being asked to do it with a for of loop. So for of is, is, is it's a type of iterator. We've done a for i equals one to max number. Um, that's a counter type of for loop. The for of is, is, a, is a more modern iterator. It, so if you have an array, it'll just kind of get you the next value of the array. And so you're not looking at adding numbers and stuff like that, um, thinking about zero value and, and that kind of thing with your array. Um, but the first thing we have to do is initialize this text. So this is one of our given variables. We want to initialize it to an empty string. And then we're going to set up this for loop. And so we're going to do 
we're just going to call it value. This is just kind of like a temporary value that holds the next the next value of our array. And so that basically is how we, this is another for loop. So I got a for loop that just says, um, actually not FB text, it's FB results or array. This is just saying, um, load the next value of the FB results array into this variable called value. And then when I have that, um, I can say FB text plus equals value. And if I want it to go to the next line, I have to give it a new line character, which is this. So new line, it's just a, an escape, a backslash n. And um, that should give me that line feed. Otherwise, if I just keep appending, it'll be just one long line of, you know, one, two, fizz, three, four, buzz, you know, that kind of thing. So we want it to have a, a line, a new line for each one. And then what that should do now, if you look at the code provided, and you're going to be learning how to do this too, you're going to have FB text, and it will be put into the inner HTML of the output ID div, you know, on the on the HTML page. So if you look at the HTML page, there's a, a this it's actually in a pre a pre a tag is something that maintains new lines for you. So normally, you know, you have to put breaks in, break tags, but pre will keep it exactly as you've sort of pasted it in. And so with our new line will be honored and so it'll end up in this output. So now our our program should actually run. So let's give it a try. Um, if I come over here and let's close this for a minute. Uh, let's see. Oh, we can't really do it when it's... Okay, three. And there's our one, two, three, fizz. Let's try some of our other cases. Four. That looks good. Um, We'll try 15, oh sorry, five, five, that looks good. And 15 looks good. About a big number, 34. So we're getting fizz buzz, fizz at 18, buzz at 20, fizz at, yeah, so I mean, it looks like we're, we're getting this good. So this all looks good. I'm going to just point out something though there this is this is what you're told to do in here but there's actually a pretty neat function that you might want to look at and I won't actually do it here but I'll show you it and you can play around with it like I said the arrays have a lot of a lot of neat functions in them so let's go and get that result I want to just pull that oops let's see So in our main, I want to just, just have a look at what we get right here. So let's run it with three. And we stop here and our FB results, we have an array one, two, fizz. And I want to go to the console and play with that a little bit. So we have FB results. And we're, we're going to, we're told to iterate through with a four of, but I believe there's a join command, kind of like the opposite of the split command that works on, on arrays. And if I say like uh, join with, with an empty string, it's just gonna go one, two, fizz. You know, if I say join with a comma, it's gonna give one, two, fit, one comma. If I say uh, join with a, new line, it's going to give me one, two, fizz. Now, is that the same thing that we would, that we're getting when we do this iteration? So if I iterate through, you can see over here, we're creating that. You can see how it, the debugger shows the new line as this little arrow. And yeah, so if I take a look here in the console at fb text 
it actually looks the same as the join. So that's a shortcut. And so that's another thing, like you're in this interview and they, you know, you do one way, you use a for of loop to create this kind of join effect. And they say, well, is there any other way you could do it? Oh yeah, let me just use the join command. So these are things to kind of think about um, in working with logic and working with these type of problems that there's more than one way to solve it. And um, you always want to be thinking about that, that, you know, there, you don't, there's not just one way, but there may be more efficient ways. And the, the more you see these different ways of doing things, the, that's called experience, you're going to have a more stuff to, to draw on. Anyway, so that is the fizz buzz. And then let's just go ahead and push it up. So get status, we've changed a couple files, get add. Oops, let's just stop that. Get add dot. Okay, get add dot, get commit in, um, wrote code, get push. And it pushes it up there. And then we would want to go to our BizBuzz <coughs> settings. I was kind of going through this. You probably are pre getting pretty used to doing this now, but just as do the whole process, save it. And we can go grab this. It's going to be not working right away, but I can grab this link and go back here. This just kind of makes a nice way to get at all of the important links. And there it is. So there we go. Okay, so that's FizzBuzz. Hope you had fun with it.